The Man from Homicide. Every week at this time, the American Broadcasting Company brings you the distinguished star of stage and screen, Dan Duryea, as Lieutenant Lou Dana, The Man from Homicide. According to Webster's Dictionary, homicide is the killing of one human being by another. But to the men of the homicide squad, it's the beginning of a dirty, dangerous job that doesn't end until the killer is found. Lieutenant Lou Dana doesn't mind. I don't like killers. Not much to see up at headquarters. Desks, typewriters, filing cabinets, tools on a job. Yeah, the cops too. They're also tools, except they've got a defect. They remember things. Things like blood and tears. And the eyes of the frightened. And sometimes the eyes of the dead. They were blue eyes, and they stared up at a dirty ceiling in a cheap hotel room. They were blue eyes, and they belonged to a girl who registered as Muriel Smith. Smith. All right, boys. Outside, huh? Her hair was brown. Age maybe 25. Her dress was expensive, and she was lying on her back. She was also dead, having been hit in the chest by several bullets. After a while, I stopped looking at her and looked at the other girl in the room. I killed her. I killed her. And your name is... Um, Susan Carter. I've already told the policeman. We have a kind of routine in these things. Mrs. Carter? Yes. Who was she? She? Muriel. Muriel Smith. Oh, no. Why do you say no? Her dress... Not in a hotel like this. She called herself Muriel Smith. That's all I know. Those gloves you're wearing, they're not very clean. Oh, they're only for drive. Oh, that is, I... I wore them so I wouldn't leave fingerprints. Yeah. It also helps explain why you waited around for the police, huh? I don't especially like you. You and me both. Why did you kill her? You... Your questions, you, you keep jumping around. It's supposed to confuse you. I killed her because she was taking my husband away from me. Is he that valuable? (laughs) I'd rather tell this to someone else. The trouble with killing people is it limits your choice of company. How did you know she was here? I overheard Mike phoning her. Mike being your husband. You uh, beat him to the appointment? Yes. Tell me how you killed him. Start outside in the hallway. You came to the door. You'd knock, of course. Naturally. I'm not a... A cop. You're not. Then what? She opened the door and I came inside. Well, we can skip the introductions. What then? I had the gun in my bag. She laughed at me. So, what more do you have to know? You shot her. She fell down and died. Then you waited for the police to arrive. Yes. What did you do with the gun? Eat it? I found I was looking at Muriel Smith again. I found I didn't like her being dead. I wished she'd close her eyes. I'm not going to say anything more to you. If you insist on meeting an assistant district attorney, come with me, please. Murphy, Mrs. Carter's going to headquarters, district attorney's office. Goodbye, Mrs. Carter. The room had been thoroughly searched. There was no gun in it. There was nothing in the room except what would be Exhibit A in a murder trial. Nobody would mention her eyes. The butler at the Carter home didn't delight in me. My tie seemed to bother him most. I decided that before I visited the next time, I'd get it hand-painted... Mr. Carter? Yes? Lieutenant Dana, my uh, credentials. Well, don't waste them on me. What can I do for you? Is your wife in? Yes, she's upstairs asleep. It's rather late, you know. I know. Would you mind asking her to come down? 
I think I would, unless it's terribly important. It's important. Well, I... I don't have a warrant. I could get one, though. It'd be even later by that time. I see. Well, will you wait, please? I didn't know exactly why I put him through it. Maybe it was because his tie was already hand-painted. Lieutenant? Yep? My wife isn't feeling very well. She can't come down. Uh Uh-huh. When did you see Muriel Smith last? Smith? Let's just leave it at Muriel. We'll discuss last names later. I think perhaps you'd better get that warrant. Did I mention I'm from Homicide? No. I'm from Homicide. Must be interesting work. No, nasty. When did you see Muriel last? Why not ask the lady? There's a technical difficulty. She's dead. She... She's what? Dead. You're... You're quite serious? I'm serious. Well, how did she... I mean, you said you're from Homicide. She was murdered. That's ridiculous. Who would want to murder... Depends on who she was. Her name was Muriel Allen. She sang at the Golden Slipper. Her voice was very beautiful. She's still dead. I find it hard to believe. She had such quality. We could manage without the piano. I'm sorry. That was Ravel, his pavan for a dead princess. Yeah? Yes, Lieutenant. A man named Marv Blakey runs a golden slipper. He's short, fat, and greedy. He doesn't hire princesses. What do you mean by that? She sang for Blakey, that's all. And what did she do for you? Get out. Uh Uh-huh. Keep your appointment at the Standard Hotel tonight? That is not... I had no appointment tonight. It uh, might pay you to keep in touch with your wife. Good night, Mr. Carter. Good night, She's downtown, holding conversation with the district attorney. Your wife, I mean. It was 1.33 in the morning. Lieutenant Dana was having unpleasant thoughts. It took me a while to notice the black coop on my tail. I proceeded south on Market, and then at a point equally distant from either cross street, swung my car across the road and got out. The black coupe burned brake lining, but made it. Hey, get that car out of the way. Get out. What's the big idea? You're blocking traffic. What traffic? Okay, I'll get out, wise guy. That's better. Looking for me? Let go my arm. Who do you think you are? Who do you think I am? All right. Now, maybe you won't be so smart. Got a license for that gun? Who minds your own? Thanks. Hey, that's my gun. You can't do that. Who put you on my tail? Wouldn't you like to know? Who put you on me? Nobody, now. You can't get away with beating me up. You're a hood, carrying a gun. Maybe you never heard, but I don't like hoods. I lose my temper with it. Stop it, would you? Who put you on me? Mr. Blakey. The boy with the golden slipper? Pull your car over at the curb. We'll use my car. The city pays for the gas. I wouldn't want this visit to cost Mr. Blakey anything. Golden Slipper was open for business. Most of it dirty. The hood and I didn't stop to enjoy it. This is Mr. Blakey's office. Don't knock. What? Okay. Uh, Mr. Blakey. Benny, what are you doing here? He's trailing me. I... Trailed me right into your office, Blakey. Benny? I had a little trouble. The other side of the door, Benny. Not quite so fast, Lieutenant. Benny. Well, he's, he's got my gun, Mr. Blakey. Benny doesn't feel right without protection, Lieutenant. I have a license for his gun. Pretty engraving. Too bad I can't read. He could get into trouble taking Benny's gun. He could get into worse trouble. He's a little careless. 
Now that you mention it, perhaps he is. Oh, Mr. Blakey, he beat up on me. Look at my face, it's all swollen. Biggest mosquitoes you ever saw Mr. this Mr. Blakey, year. you ought to do something about it, because you sent me after it. Get out. You, you ain't sore on me, Mr. Blakey. Get out. Because I, I couldn't help it if the guy... He wouldn't have tried nothing if I had a chance to get a gun on him. Benny. I don't want to talk to you. Here's your gun. Catch. <laughs> now you got a gun on me. Um, uh, out, Benny. Benny isn't a very strong character. It wasn't a character analysis of Benny that brought you here? No. I don't want any trouble with you, Dennis. I realize you can make trouble, but why? Why did you put Benny on me? I didn't. You misunderstood his instructions. Now, uh, why not let the whole thing drop, huh? This isn't your beat. Homicide's my beat. <laughs> All right. Maybe the prices I charge the suckers is murder, but... How'd Muriel Allen go tonight? Muriel? Muriel Allen. She didn't appear tonight. Why not? I don't know. Where were you at 11.30 tonight? Right here. Reading a good book. How many witnesses? Four. Seven. How many would you like? You got a large payroll. What happened at 11.30 tonight? Muriel Allen quit the golden slipper. Yeah. <laughs> Practicing to be a theatrical agent, Lieutenant. Three bullets hit her. I need the gun they came out of. At 11.30 tonight, I was here reading a good book. Seven witnesses, Lieutenant. And I'm only one dumb... You're playing it too straight, Blakey. Which means? You had it for her. Well, that may be true. It's a habit of mine. I've seen her. More than habit, Blakey. She was worth a gross of your ordinary stock. All right. So I'm all broken up inside by the news. It wasn't news. Why was Benny staked out at the Carter house? Good night, Lieutenant. I can still use that gun. Good night. The hallway that ran behind the club was dark. I headed for the floor quick. But halfway down, I found out it wasn't entirely my own idea. Oh! For a while, everything was very still. Everything was very black. But then they began peeling the layers of velvet off me, and something began to pound. It must have taken me 20 minutes to discover it was my own head. I lifted it off the ground, and... The air smelled good, which meant I'd traveled. There were trees around and a sky. From which handful of obscure facts, Lieutenant Dana deduced he was out in the country. The gun somebody had been careful to put in my hand was still warm. I got to my feet and crossed over to him. Dying hadn't improved his looks any. Benny was a very dead boy. Not a frame, especially. Nuisance value, maybe. Time consumed, more likely. But time for what? They still had the green lamp burning out in front of headquarters. You sound like a Hawaiian, Sergeant. I'm wide awake and further... Oh, hi, Lieutenant. Hello, Dave. Well, you've been gone quite a time without checking in. I... Hey, what's with your head? My head? Oh. Well, now you mention it, the blood's tickling the back of my neck. Who slugged you? Little boy blue. I've also got a corpse out in the car for you. Oh, anybody I know? <laughs> Have the boys collect them. Sure. Now, you ought to do something about that head. Huh? Trade it in for a new model, maybe. Dave, I want conversation with Susan Carter. Not tonight, Lou. The DA threw her out. Didn't care for her confession, especially without the gun to go with it. How long ago? Oh, a half hour, maybe. Come on. I'm dumping the corpse in your lap, and you've got the lap for it. I'm in a hurry. Okay, Lieutenant. Now, why did that girl confess? Maybe because she loved her husband. Like that, huh? He must have something. Sure. Hand-painted ties and plays the piano. Where are you heading? I still want conversation with Susan Carter tonight. Maybe I was wrong. My head was still pounding. Pounding and confused. 
And I was more worried about a dead girl named Muriel Allen than current events. The Carter house was dark when I got there. A huge pile built by a million dollars and a lousy architect. I'd hoped the butler would try to stop me. I had no luck. He must have been asleep. The front door opened to the second key I tried. The skating rink they called a foyer was dark, but a line of light at floor level down the corridor told me where I wanted to go. I went. And rehearsed my manners for the Carter. No, no. Nobody noticed my low bow as I went through the door. Which way? The, the window. I caught a taillight going around the corner. Ah, there's nothing special about a taillight. I was late. Seconds late. I turned back into the room. Susan Carter was as white as the belly of a dead fish. Lieutenant, uh... The faint was a break for her. She could stop looking at her husband. As for him, well, maybe he was looking at something. But it wasn't anything a pair of living eyes could see. Maybe it was a girl named Muriel. The rich are always lucky. Lou Dana here. Put out a call fast for Marv Blakey, leader of the Golden Slipper. That's right, Blakey. And when you pull him in, drop me a card, huh? I ordered half a dozen policemen and waited. Life caught up with Susan Carter. I can't. Take it easy, Mrs. Carter. You got a long time to settle down with your husband's death. It's not possible. It's possible. Happens all the time. Ask any cop in homicide. But who? That's for later. This one you wouldn't want to confess to, would you? How can you say things like that? Practice. I need a little inf information from you, and I need it quick. My husband is just... My kid. He's going to stay that way, and there's nothing you can do about the dead. You brutal. I try. What happened back at the Standard Hotel? That confession isn't worth a small smile now. Oh, Dale. I... I got there after my... In the hallway, I could hear them quarreling. And then they shot. I wanted to run, but I went in. Mike wasn't there. But I can't go on. I can't. You don't have to. The rest's for me. I think I'm going to like it. The uniformed men came along, and the technicians, and a doctor. It was probably the first time Mike Carter had a doctor without a Park Avenue address. He didn't put up any objections, though. I got out, went back to headquarters and waited. Somebody sneaked in and bandaged my head. I didn't notice at the time. Later on, I admired the bandage. Plenty of reports came in. The weather was going to be fine tomorrow. Captain Slocum had a baby over at the 16th Precinct. It was going to rain tomorrow. And then it came. They'd run Blakey down, but we're having trouble. I decided to go and have trouble with him. Make me smart, Dave. Blakey's inside, Lieutenant. Only way of getting to him is through the alley, and he's got a couple of guns on us. So? Uh, we sent for the heavy artillery, and they ought to be getting here soon. I can't wait. Lieutenant, what are you going to do? Go in and take Blakey? Now, Lou, the alley is clear. You'll be a setup. I don't need artillery for Blakey. I'll be seeing you. Lou! Lieutenant, you can't! You're not bulletproof! Quiet! A thing like that's liable to get around. Yeah? Stop where you are. I'm coming in. I told you. I'm coming in. Hello, Blake. 
Lake Key. All right. Have you got this for us or what? I'm taking you in for murder. Yeah, you make a nice enough. Thanks. Let's have your gun. Why don't you come and get it, copper? All right. I will. All right, you better stop right where you are. I want your gun. All right, now. Another step, just one step more, and you get it. I don't mean the gun either. I mean bullets in the belly. They hurt there. Your gun, Blakey. What's the matter with you? What's wrong with you? You bullets won't hit you? You think you're different from anybody else because you're a cop? All right, well, you stop moving in on me. What's wrong with you? You're... you're... I'm Lou Dana, Blakey. All right. All right, take it. <laughs> no, Blakey. Pick it up. Hand it to me. All right. Thanks. All right. Let's go make marks on the sergeant's blotter, huh? Marvin Blakey was booked at headquarters, the charge being murder. Marvin Blakey, being booked, was put in a cell to await his lawyer and his trial. Marvin Blakey had a few things to say. Carter killed Muriel. Benny, how safe would I have been with him on the loose? I see you're grinning, Lieutenant. You mean how safe am I now? Never mind. Carter killed Muriel. You didn't know her, did you? Even now, with me where I am, I can almost figure it's worth it. I did know her, see? I left him. Maybe he'd crack in the months to come before the state put him away. Maybe walk into the death chamber having known Muriel wouldn't help. How would I know? I was a cop on my way to make an official notification. The sky was turning dirty gray. The Carter house was large. The uniformed men and the technicians had long since gone. Michael Carter had gone with them. I rang again. It wasn't the butler who opened the door. It wasn't the girl I'd seen for the first time that night a few hours earlier. This woman was older, grayer, and tired. Lieutenant Dana. Yeah. Mind if I come in? I don't think I'll ever mind anything anymore. Come in. Thanks. Let's go where you can sit down. <laughs> Kindness doesn't become you. Well, Lieutenant? Your husband ever wear driving gloves? No. This is the summertime. He wouldn't have worn any other kind of gloves. He didn't. Your confession didn't make very much sense, Mrs. Carter. Do we have to... Without the gun... We found that gun. Did you? Your husband's pocket. Should I be surprised? No. His prints were on it. Yes. Very clear prints. Too clear. Too clear, Lieutenant. A man fires a gun. The prints tend to be smudged a bit from handling. But supposing a gun is wiped clean. And then the man's fingers are carefully pressed on the handle. Then you'd have his prints on it. But they'd be too clear. I never knew that. No. I had the lab give his hands a paraffin test. What's that? When a man fires a gun, small gunpowder particles are embedded in the skin. Oh? Michael Carter hadn't fired a gun recently. I'm tired. I'm not sure I know what you're trying to say. With Michael dead, you've got his murderer. Why did you make all these tests? Because Muriel Allen registered at the Standard Hotel as Muriel Smith. She... she was ashamed. A club singer working for Blakey? 
She was going to see Mike. Well, then she wouldn't have registered as Miss Smith. She didn't take that room for romance. She took it for a meeting with you. Lieutenant Dana, what are you getting at? Something very simple, Mrs. Carter. I'm just believing your confession. She stared at me. Through the long windows, the sun was starting to flush the sky. She stared at me and worked her tongue over her dry lips. She wanted to say things, but didn't know what things to say. You were jealous. You met Muriel Allen in that hotel room and killed her. Your husband was there. He took the gun you'd used away with him. Why? Maybe because he loved you once. (laughs) Aren't you being sentimental? He was. And it led to his death. He thought maybe he was giving you a chance to get away. That's why he lied to me when I got to your house, said you were upstairs sleeping. You didn't even try to get away, though. Instead, you made your confession. A confession that would seem false. That would make it look as though you were trying to protect your husband. That's the way Blakey figured it. That's why he killed your husband. I couldn't have known. Would you have cared... With your husband dead, you remembered the gun in his pocket. You took it out, wiped it clean, and then carefully pressed a corpse's fingerprints on it. The corpse didn't object. You're very clever. No. I just get feelings about killers. All right. I'll go with you, Lieutenant. But... Yeah? Yeah? What about the feelings you get about the dead? Susan Carter was booked at the 12th precinct for the murder of Muriel Allen. We gave her a number and a file card, and the law would take its due process. There was dust on my desk at headquarters. I signed my report, Louis Dana, Lieutenant of Detectives, Homicide Squad. In a little while, I'd get up and go home. Till then, I could think about a girl whose eyes stared up at the dirty ceiling of a cheap hotel room. I don't like killers. You've just heard the first in a series starring Dan Duryea as The Man from Homicide with Larry Dobkin as Dave. In tonight's cast, you heard Gene Bates as Susan Carter, Bill Boucher as Blakey, and Howard Culver as Michael Carter. Music was by Basil Adlam. Man from Homicide is written by Lou Vitties, directed by Dwight Hauser. Be with us again next week, same time, over most of these same ABC stations, to hear Dan Duryea as The Man from Homicide. Bill Spargro speaking. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.